welcome to Light Church Online. Thank you for joining us for today. Today we begin our series on the biblical principle of authority. <clears throat> and it seems as though this is one of the most misunderstood principles uh, from a believer's standpoint and partly because uh, we have an adversary that's helped in deceiving many concerning what authority really means and God's uh, intent so that uh, as Jesus said the closer we got to the time of his return that there would be lawlessness like never before. But authority was, was never intended by God to be a bad thing, submission to authority. Submission to authority was intended by God to empower us, not to strip away from us, or not to cause us to feel inferior or as though we were lacking something. But our adversary made sure that we misunderstood it so that we somehow or another got the impression that authority means that it's something bad. So we've come to a place where when you hear that word submit, people automatically put up walls because they think submission is a bad thing. But God never intended it to be so. In fact, he intended submission to be a means by which we are blessed. And a, and, a, and, a, and a person that's under authority is a person that's empowered and is covered and protected. Because that's what authority does. It provides a covering. It provides protection. So that a person that does not walk under authority, a person that violates the protocol of God literally puts themselves in harm's way. So when we look at God's chain of command, when we look at the protocol that God establishes, we can see evidence of every time a person got out from under authority, they became a subject of the devil's assaults. So when we look at this term, and, and, and we're going to be looking at it for several weeks now. By the way, uh, because this word has been so misunderstood and so misappropriated, misapplied, Christians are sick, Christians are defeated, Christians walk so far beneath the kind of life that God intended for Christians to have and it's all because somehow or another we think that to submit to authority is a bad thing but when you are and we'll look at it in just a minute when you are walking under authority then you are able to walk in authority and the enemy that is bent on our destruction is unable to attack and successfully assault us the way he's been able to. See, when, you, when you're walking under authority and you are a man or woman that's submitted to the authority that God has placed us under, then you put yourself in a position to where the enemy says, well, I can't mess with them yet. Because they are... They are covered by somebody. It, it's like a child. It's like a kid that's in school. As long as that child is in school and abiding by the rules and are, in some, in some people's minds, confined to the classroom, then whatever an enemy might want to do, they can't do as long as that child is submitted in that classroom. 
They are covered. Do you understand what I'm telling you? But you take a child and say, I ain't going to no class. I don't care what the principal or the teacher say. I'm going to go where I want to go when I want to go. And you can't tell me nothing. Well, then that child puts themselves in harm's way. So if an adversary comes, they are not covered. That's God's plan for authority. And everywhere we see the levels of authority honored, we see the power of God working at its best. Because you can't operate in the power of God and not be submitted to authority. So when we look at this, you know, we last less evening Saturday evening uh, we began our healing series and uh, by the way if if you are dealing with some kind of physical challenge you've had what they call chronic situations where you just can't seem to get rid of it you probably ought to come at at six o'clock on Saturdays for the next several weeks because last night the power of God was in here and several people received their healing last night as the word went forth and was taught God wants you well. But again, when you talk about authority, if you're not submitted to the authority of God and his word, then the enemy knows that he can put any kind of sickness on you. But when you are submitted to the authority of God's word, you know his word says that Jesus already dealt with any sickness and any disease. And we'll see... As we go through this series of messages, what happens when we honor authority? Now, let me say, say a couple of things, and then we'll get into the definition of what authority is. Again, authority is not a bad thing. And anybody that suggests to you that it is doesn't know God. In fact, you're listening to the other voice because it was his lack of respect for authority that got him expelled from God. So every, everywhere we see where God said submit and obey, we have had the devil try and convince us that that's a bad thing. When it comes to parent and children, how many of you children were rebellious to your parents because you knew better than your parents did? And yet God said that that was the first commandment that he gave that had a promise attached to it. Submit to the authority of your parents. He gave you parents so that you could be covered and you could be protected. And when you decide that you are going to walk out from under the authority and the instruction of your parents, you put yourself in the devil's path and he's going to do his best to kill you, to steal from you, to destroy every and anything you are involved in. Now, we don't like hearing that kind of thing. We like hearing the part where God said, I'm going to bless you. And that's okay as long as you realize that the same God that said, I will bless you, said, if you don't obey your parents, you're going to shorten your own life. Same God. All right, well, did he mean it over here and not mean it over there? So when we look at authority the way God intended for us to look at it, then we have his power operating through our lives. So let's, let, let's look at it from a biblical perspective. First of all, the word authority means the right to command. The right to command or the right to control. You have the right to control something. You might not, have, might not have the ability to, but you have the right to. And usually where there is the right given, there is the ability at your disposal. 
In other words, you are backed up by someone that has the ability to enforce what you have the right to control. Case in point, on Wednesday evenings, if you come here, you will see a police officer helping us safely cross the street, turn in, and exit the property. That officer has the right to control the traffic. Right? They don't have the might to do it, but they got the right. But if you challenge that officer's right, then you're going to come face to face with the might that's at her disposal to enforce her right. I said this morning at 9 o'clock, the, 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 the traffic officers, the patrolmen, they have been given the right to tell us how to conduct ourselves on the highway. And a time or two, I ignored their right to tell me. And I came up against their might. Because you know what happens when you ignore their right. The next thing you, you do is you start seeing things you didn't see before. Like blue and red lights. And you start hearing what you didn't hear before. Like sirens. And you hear voices that you didn't hear before. Like pull the car over. So, so my privilege of driving down the highway was suspended because I ignored the right of that officer to tell me the speed limit says 70. Is this, did that help you? So to understand what authority is, it is the right to control or command. It is the right to determine. So let's go to the very beginning of authority. And it's not hard. It's not, it's not, it doesn't require you to be like these graduates. Y'all are smart, right? They sitting there looking at me like, who, me? I'm not gonna ask y'all nothing that I'm not asking anybody. Y'all the one with the caps on, shoot. Y'all supposed to know something. All right, let's go to Genesis chapter 1. Because in Genesis chapter 1, we have the origins of authority. This is where it all started. Okay, authority didn't start with me, nor did it start with you. All right, Genesis chapter 1. Are you there? Yes. Say amen if you're there. Yes. Okay, if you're not there, just find it when you get there. All right. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 says what? In, in what? In the beginning. So we know we're at the very? Yeah, the very beginning of what? The beginning of what? The beginning of everything. Would you agree? Y'all agree to that? This is where it all started. All right. In the beginning, what? God. Now, we're not told what happened before then. We're not told, well, who was God's mama? <laughs> Y'all be serious. This is gradual Sunday. I'm, I'm trying to make a point here. All we are told, and that's all apparently we need to know, is that when you talk about the beginning, there ain't but one word you need to know, and that is God. The beginning is not me, it's not you, it's not your children. The beginning is God. So, 
if we didn't read any more, we would know that everything else came, help me somebody, after, after God, right? So then, if everything came after God, who do you suppose is the supreme authority? It has to be God, because God was and is the beginning. So everything that comes after God must be under. Y'all, you, you get that? All right, it must be under. So when we talk about the right to control, who has the right to control? The one that was created or the one that did the creating? And that's because God is the beginning. Now you can argue with it all you want. That doesn't change it. So everything starts from him and proceeds. However it is to proceed, it starts with him. Now, smart people recognize, let me find out how he intends for this to run because it started with him. Right? So, so when we talk about authority, you got to talk about God. I understand how, you know, God is the beginning, and you don't consult the beginning when you plan in your life. You're not the beginning. Who was here first, you or him? So why would you plan your whole life without consulting the beginning? And why are you surprised when you don't consult him and things don't work out? What you shocked about? You didn't consult the beginning. You acted as though you were the beginning. And so, as you proceeded, stuff got all messed up. And you have the audacity to act surprised. So let's see here how the beginning says authority operates. You, you ready? All right, now you have to do a little reading. I know y'all thought he was reading days was over, but trust me, it ain't. All right. Genesis 1, verse 3. You see it? Yeah. Give me the first three words. He, he did what? Yeah. Didn't say God did. It said yeah. God said. Now, who is God? Yeah. The beginning. And he said. Well, what did he say? Yeah. And? So the beginning said, and then there was. Look at verse 6. Give me the first three words. Then God said. Well, he says some other stuff, and at the end of verse 7, what does it say? It was what? It was so. Verse 9, first three words. The end of that verse says what? It was, so. it was so. Look at verse 11. First three words. Okay, then God said, the end of that verse says what? It was so. And it was so. Several translations either have it was so or and that's the way it was. Verse 14, what does it say? Then God said. Verse 15, the end of it says what? It was so. So are you picking up on what I'm picking up on? That the beginning 
said and what? It was so. Now here's a revelation for you. Not only was it so, but it still is so. Did he say let there be light? Was it so? Is there still light? Let's go on. Verse 20. What does it say? Okay, God said. Now, based on what we have read, we see that whenever God says, it was so. And it still is. It still is. I said it still is. It's still what? It's still so. So, I don't know how many thousands of years it's been since God said this. But, I mean, depending on what agency of information you get, some say it was thousands, some say it's millions. But however long it was, he said it, and, and it still is. Now, smart you hadn't been able to change that. Educated you hadn't been, you who can work miracles with technology, build fine structures, hadn't been able to change this. So we know that when it comes to what he says, that's the way it is. All right, go to verse 24. Come on. He said, look at the end of that verse. It was so. So would I be safe in assuming that whatever he says, is what? It's so. If he says it, it's so. If God says it, it's so. Don't care what I say about it or what you say about it. If he says it, it's so. So wherever I see where God said, is what? It's so. You believe that? Are you sure? I'm going to ask you one more time. Are you sure you believe that? Yes. Because, because, see, what I don't want you to hear is that God only says what you like. We know if he says it, it's so. Well, what about when he says something you don't like? You sure about that? Are you positive? Do you really believe that? Look at verse 26. Then God said, read what he said. Did it say all the earth? Did it say, your Bible say all the earth? Some of y'all who are looking at the screen, does the screen say all the earth? Just checking. God said, let us make in our and after our, and I want the man or the human to have what? Dominion, that means authority. That's the right to control, the right to command, the right to determine. Let them have that. Over all the earth. Now we know, based on what we read, if God said it, it's so. So when he said, man will be like us. Say what? Say what? 
Say what? I didn't hear you. See, why y'all whispering now? See, we, we, you were shouting about, he said, let there be light. But now he says, let them be like us. And now we want to back up off of that. Because our religious mind tells us, we're not like God. I'm not the one who said it. The one who said it is the beginning. And whatever he says is so. And he said, I'm making you like me. To have dominion over all the earth. So you can push off on him the right to control, the right to command, the right to determine. You can push that off on him. Well, why did God let this? And why God do this? And why? Wait a minute. The beginning said, I'm making mankind in my image and they are going to have where? Over all the earth. So the question then is, if the earth is messed up, Why is it his fault? Why you keep begging him to do something? You keep begging him, straighten out your family. Straighten out your husband. Straighten out your wife. Jerk the slack out of your boss. Make them do this. Wait a minute. See, that's why I ask you, are you sure you believe? Because if you believe he said, and it was so and still is, then you can't shift and, and read where he said, I'm giving you dominion over all the earth, but then you want him to do something about the mess you made. Look at verse 28. Come on. Then God did what? He blessed them. Go on. Oh, 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 wait a minute. He mean this is how he blesses? You mean he blesses by saying. And whatever he says. So you, you, you don't need God to send you a check in the mail. You don't need some lightning bolt to hit you in the top of your head so you'll feel like the Lord is with you. Not if you true to what you just finished saying in here. Oh, I believe. I believe that he said it and it was so. You said that. That's what you, I said. I got it on tape. All y'all said that. I believe that if God said it, it was so and it still is. Well, did he say, I'll never leave you? I'll never abandon you. Did he say that? Then why are you still asking him to be with you? Why do you keep saying Come by if you don't stay long. Come on, Come on, Come on, Cause the same one that said, let there be light, and there was light, is the same one that said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. And yet you keep asking him, come Lord Jesus, be with me Lord. Come by here. You don't believe. He blessed them. He said. What did he say when he blessed them? Be what? Be fruitful and multiply. Is that what he said? Y'all sure about that? 
then why in the world would you let somebody tell you that God stopped you from having a baby? How can the one that said be fruitful and multiply stop you from having a baby? See, God's, God knew it wasn't my time yet, so he, 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 he put it on hold. All them kind of nonsensical excuses we come up with for not believing God. And some... Some preacher, I started to say something else. Gets up and tries to explain. Ain't no explanation needed. That couldn't have been God. He's the one that said, be fruitful and multiply. Now, I'm trying to show you that authority started with God and it works the way he works it he says and it is so now either you believe that and it becomes so for you or you don't believe it and it doesn't You can't believe that the same God that said one thing meant that. But over here, he says something that he did mean. Y'all look at me kind of funny here. Or is it that you just learning? Chapter three. Chapter three. You know Genesis chapter 3. We know that God said you can eat every tree that I have planted in this garden but one. If you eat this tree Why y'all whispering? You gonna what? You gonna die. Isn't that what he said? Same God said, let that be light. And that was light. Same God said, be fruitful and multiply. And that's the way it was. Same God that said, I put this garden here for you. All the gold, the precious stones. See, we shouting about now. Oh yeah, we, you know, we blessed. We blessed by the best, all these kind of cliches. But see, your faith doesn't work if you're trying to be selective. Doesn't work. He said, all these trees are yours to partake of. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Abundance. Don't eat this one. Now, do you believe that you can eat all the rest of them? Oh, yes, Lord. Then why didn't you believe that you shouldn't eat this one? Because he said, if you eat this one, you got it? Well, what happened? Wait a minute. Let there be light and... All right, let the earth be and... You eat this tree, you will die and... It was so. Now, let me, let me close by telling you this. Authority can only be used the way the beginning 
shows us how to use it. And that's by what? By saying. by saying. See, you can't beat the devil up with your fist. He's a spirit. You got it? So if you're going to have authority over him, you, got, you can't think nothing. It didn't tell us in God's thoughts. It sure would be nice if there was some light. And God's thoughts. Sure would be nice if we had man. That's not what we read. It said, he said. So if you're going to exercise authority, you better open your mouth. You got it? So authority works when we work it the way the original says it has to be worked. Now, did he say we had authority over all the earth? You sure he said that? Are you positive? So then all you got to do is look around you. Whatever is giving you problems, if you believe, ask yourself this simple yet elementary and absurd question. Is what is bothering me on this earth? How many of y'all been dealing with some kind of sickness? Is, is what you've been dealing with on this earth? It is? What about you? It's on the earth? Who else had the hand up? It's what you've been dealing with on this earth? Now I know you're looking at me, well, that sounds kind of crazy. But wait a minute. He said you had authority over all the earth. But you keep you keep going to heaven. When he said I have given you authority over all the earth. So if your problem is here Huh? You, you what? You have authority over it. So why you keep going to heaven? Your problem ain't in heaven. Your problem is here where he said you got the authority. And that's why you're still wrestling with it. Because you think authority is a bad thing. So you don't submit to authority. And because you don't submit to authority, authority that was meant to help you doesn't. The authority he gave you was over everything here. But you're supposed to be submitted to authority. But when you rebel against authority, what you say is, I don't believe in authority. So now the authority that is supposed to be used to solve your problem can't solve your problem because you don't believe in what he gave you to solve it. Ain't nobody gonna tell me what to do, shoot. I'm a man just like they are. I know better than them. This ain't a matter of what you know. This is a matter of you falling in line with the beginning. When you fall in line with the beginning, then I walk under his authority and everything in the earth walks under mine. 
Matthew chapter 8, a Roman soldier comes to Jesus and says, my servant is at home sick. Jesus says, I'll come and heal him. The Roman soldier says, you don't have to come to my house because I know how authority works. I believe in authority, so I am under authority and I have authority over others. And so I say, I what? See, the beginning said, so this man, not even a man of the covenant, says, I understand how it works. You, it, it works by your words. And so I say to one, go, and they go. I say to one, come, and they come. I say to one, do this, and it's done. And I am also under authority. So when people that I am under tell me to come, I come. I don't give them no lip. I don't rebel against them. When they tell me to go, I hop to it. I got to go because I am under authority. And I recognize a man that has authority over sickness and disease. And you don't have to come to my house. Use your authority. Only speak a word and my servant will be, not maybe, let's see if this will work. My servant will be. I'm under authority, so I believe in it. So I have authority and I operate in it. I believe in it, I'm under it. I operate in it because I believe in it. So now when I need it to help me or to help somebody that works for me. See, he said my servant. My servant. What does that tell us? His servant was under authority. And so because his servant was under authority, the man that he was under got healing for him the servant didn't go to Jesus the man that had authority over the servant went to Jesus I wish I had somebody see you barely ache about my husband he can't tell me and I just hey just keep it up My mama thinking, my daddy, just, just keep it up. And you'll be the servant laying on the bed that never will get healed. Never will get to enjoy the blessings. Because the one that God placed you under authority has been covering you. And has been given the authority to determine how your life is going to come out up until a certain end. When my kids were kids, just babies, and Satan moved in on them trying to kill them, oh no, that don't happen in my house. Not with, these are my kids. You don't put that on my kids. You take that down the street where they believe in that mess. We don't believe in that here. But my kids were under my authority. So Satan couldn't just come in and do what he wanted with them. Finally, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, this is so important. And that's what I've been telling you all along. In Matthew chapter 6, Jesus said, no man can serve two masters. God did not design your heart to have split loyalties where I love this one, but I love this one. No, he said, you're going to do one or the other. You're going to serve one or you're going to serve the other. In other words, either you believe God totally or you don't. Because if you say, I believe God's going to bless me, then you also have to believe that when you don't do what he tells you to do, he's going to discipline you. Yeah. 
When my dad said, I'm going to spank you. Well, he didn't say spank. They didn't use them terms back then. They used the other word. We know what it was. Whooping. When my dad said, I'm going to whip you. You know what? It caused a reaction in me, Sam. My knees started shaking. I felt the power come over me. And wasn't no point in me thinking that there was going to be repentance on his part. I knew, and a lot of times we get in the bed before he came home. In the bed, six o'clock. <laughs> Perhaps that will stay his hand. Uh-uh, he said, I'm going to whip you. Hey, you can count on it. My dad was a, a, in the gender business, so you know he worked late. But I also knew that when my, da my dad said, I'm going to get you this. It caused a reaction. And I went out and told him, my daddy said he's going to do so and so. You can't believe God over here and then over here in this area that you don't like, choose not to believe. If he said, if you bring me your tithes and your offerings, I'll open up the windows of heaven and I'll pour you out a blessing that there will not be room enough for you to receive. You can't say, oh, I believe that. But the same God that said that said, if you don't, you're going to be cursed with a curse. The devourer is going to tear up and take down all you try and build. And you keep trying to figure out, why am I going wrong? So you do what you think is tithing and giving. That means you give when it's convenient for you. And then when it doesn't work, you claim that stuff don't work. Oh no, it's working. Because the same God that said, you will be blessed, said you will be cursed. And you can't say, I believe God over here when it's favorable to me. But when I don't like something, he says, I don't believe that. Did he say that my body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? Did he say that? Yes, he said that. But he also said, if you misuse your body, you're going to pay for it with your life. Did he say that? So why are we surprised? We've done everything with our bodies but what he said. And then wonder why we can't get healed. See, the same one that said, I will bless you with health, said, if you're prone to overeat and put a knife to your throat, that's his way of saying. Oh, y'all don't know that one, do you? Stop eating so much. That's a, for authority to work, for your faith to work. You can't select the parts of his word you're going to believe. Jesus says it doesn't work that way. And when he ran into a young man, or rather a young man ran into him. What must I do to gain eternal life? Jesus said, you know the commandments? The young man said, oh yeah, I've done all of those things. And Jesus said, you lack one thing. Go sell what you have, give to the poor, and come follow me. Well, see, as long as what Jesus said to him was fitting with what he liked, he was on board. Then Jesus told him to sell what you have, give to the poor, and come follow me. In fact, Jesus never told the man to give away everything. He said, sell what you have, give to the poor. 
But what he heard was, oh, shoot, man, nah, uh uh-uh. Same Jesus. What about you? How many times has he said to you, you need to submit your life to my teachings? Because if you don't, your adversary is going to take you out. And in the process of him taking you out, he's going to destroy your credibility, strip you of your good looks. And he's going to make your life a living hell. Even though the world is going to tell you you're doing okay. If he said it, it's so. Whatever God said, you got to believe all of it. And that will help you in the decisions that you make for the rest of your life. Did God say, That he would bless me if I do thus and so. Yes. Did he say that if I do this, I'm going to mess my life up? Yes. Well, I'm going to believe all of what he says. And I'm going to do what he tells me to do. Even though the temptation is going to be there to do the other. What will help you is believing God. I believe that if I do what he tells me to do, it's going to go the way he says it's going to go. I also believe that if I don't do what he tells me to do, it's going to go the way he says it's going to go. Bow your heads. Life is a race, but you don't have to run it alone. Take advantage of your help. Receive Jesus today, and he will help you with everything you're going through. God has a plan for you. The first step in that plan is salvation. Read Romans 10 and 9 and pray this prayer of salvation. God in heaven, I believe in my heart. You raised Jesus from the dead. I confess with my mouth, Jesus is Lord. Jesus, I call on you now for my eternal salvation. I receive forgiveness for all my sin. I accept your unconditional love. Thank you for receiving me. I submit myself to you. With you as my helper, I will live according to your plan the rest of my life. Amen. If you are blessed by today's message, we encourage you to give an offering. Simply click the Give Online link on the Light Church homepage. Thank you for tuning in this week. We look forward to you joining us during our next broadcast. Have a blessed week.